On Sunday night, we witnessed what's likely going to be one of the best games of the entire 2020 season. When the Seahawks faced the Patriots, we saw it all. We had a star matchup between two quarterbacks and Russell Wilson and Cam Newton. We had an awesome back and forth game that came down to the final play. And to top it off, we also had a premier matchup from the skill positions as well. This game featured a rising talent in DK Metcalf facing off against the NFL's best cornerback in Stephon Gilmore. After going through the film from this game, the main thing that stood out to me was just how much Metcalf has developed as a complete package receiver. I broke him down this summer on this very channel, but Metcalf is already utilizing all those skills that we talked about. He used these in order to beat one of the greats. His use of stems, body control, and hands to create separation on his routes was very impressive in this one. According to my tracking, Metcalf was targeted five times while Gilmore was in coverage. Of those five throws, three were caught for a grand total of 85 yards and a long touchdown. This happened in the second quarter. We'll start this breakdown by looking at that play first. Before the snap, the Patriots lined up with a single high safety deep. Since the running back was flexed out wide against a linebacker and Gilmer was in the slot standing with outside leverage, these are pretty clear tells that the Patriots were in man on this one. Cover one man specifically is what they used here. As we already discussed in my video breaking down the Patriots defense over the summer, cover one man is one of their favorite coverages. They used this on over half of their snaps in this game alone. Now, the one thing you may notice about the play design that Brian Schottenheimer called in this one is that it's actually perfect for attacking cover three as well. Where cover one is main coverage across the board with a single high safety, cover three is a great complement as it uses three deep and four underneath zones. These two coverages are what the Patriots and the Seahawks both love running. Now, if the Patriots were actually in cover three on this one, the dig route by the outside receiver combined with the corner route by Metcalf would be perfect for creating a one-on-one -on -one matchup against a safety. However, since we already discussed that they were in man coverage, the one-on-one -on -one set up for Metcalf to take on Gilmore. That's what happened here. After the snap, Metcalf started by using a square step to align both of his feet in order to create the two-way go. He then leaned forward and sprinted inside, angling towards the center of the defense. Now watch closely between the 48 and 45 yard line. Metcalf angles his route even sharper inside. This is the key point on this play. What Metcalf did here is very nuanced. His stem made it look like he was running a completely different route. From the same exact look and the same exact release, many teams will use their slot receiver on a deep over or a climb route in order to attack the middle of the defense. They'll usually pair that with a post on the outside in order to pull the safeties backwards. After the safeties are pulled deep, this route will theoretically find the hole created between them and the linebackers. That's what Gilmore thought was happening on this play. He wanted to protect against this exact concept, so he started to undercut the route and he even peeked his head back towards the quarterback. This stem is how Metcalf created separation on this play. He knew what Gilmore would do in this very situation, and he used this to his advantage. Once Gilmore started to undercut the route, Metcalf jab stepped down, and he accelerated in the opposite direction. Now, if you look closely, even after all is said and done, it's not like Metcalf completely had Gilmore burned at this point, but he did give his quarterback enough of a window for this throw. All Wilson has to do is lob the pass over his shoulder in order to connect with his receiver. That's exactly what happened here. Even though the ball was slightly underthrown since Wilson was about to get hit, he still threw it far enough to allow Metcalf to bring it in. Metcalf slowed down slightly, he tracked the ball over his shoulder, and then he used his enormous body to shield the ball to make the catch. He then shed the tackle and he walked into the end zone for the 54-yard touchdown. This play was all due to Metcalf's stem and his ability to sell the route knowing exactly what Gilmer was going to do. This play is literally perfect and it shows just how much Metcalf has developed as a pure route runner. He's always had the elite body with size and speed, but route running outside of fades and slants like we talked about in my video was something that I wanted to improve on. It's clear that's exactly what he did all summer. Using him inside as a slot receiver like Schottenheimer did here also gives the Seahawks another weapon. Now, generally speaking, Gilmore primarily trailed Metcalf in coverage across the field. Even after they motioned receivers around and Gilmore followed, which is usually an indicator of man coverage, the Patriots would sometimes drop into zone after those motions. These were a nice tendency breaker so that Wilson couldn't rely on the initial pre-stamp motion in order to give him an indication of their coverage. However, like we discussed in that previous play, one guarantee indicator was that any time Metcalf was in the slot and Gilmer lined up there too, there was definitely man coverage. That only happened a few times in this game, and from my perspective, it's honestly something I think more teams should do more in the future. They should move their star receivers inside purely to see how the defense lines up initially and then motion them outside if star coverage is part of the defense's game plan. This could become a very reliable indicator of man versus zone coverage for the quarterback. Now, moving on for the next play, I wanted to jump forward to the fourth quarter and talk about Metcalf's final catch in this game. This came on a second and 10. Metcalf ran a hitch against Gilmore, who was playing in man coverage. Let's look at this one closely. 
Before the snap, the Patriots lined up with a single high safety standing at roughly 15 yards deep. Their other safety was in man coverage in the tight end, while the inside linebacker dropped into a hole over the center of the defense. This coverage is called cover one plug. After the snap, Metcalf exploded up the sideline using a speed release in order to threaten deep. After hitting his sixth step at seven yards past the line of scrimmage, Metcalf took a large step with his inside foot while simultaneously using his inside hand to chop down at Gilmore's elbow. This broke Gilmore's contact. Metcalf then dropped his hips and flipped them back towards the quarterback almost instantly. Wilson saw this and he threw the ball on time, which allowed Metcalf to rumble forward and pick up 19 yards on this play. The key takeaway on this one is how Metcalf paired his hands and feet together to create separation. So many people criticized him for his three-cone time and his agility at the combine. It's clear that agility isn't holding him back. Since Metcalf knows that Gilmore loves making physical contact to slow down his opponents, it's also clear that Metcalf had a game plan for this exact situation. He knew that accelerating up the sideline would solicit this exact reaction. This is very good to see, and again, it definitely shows his development. Overall, and in this game, it's pretty clear that Metcalf came up big in order to help out his team. In addition to those two catches, Metcalf grabbed a quick slant where he uses physicality to create separation. The other two targets that I mentioned that weren't completed were simply overthrown. The out route by the sideline should have been a catch if Wilson threw a better ball. Metcalf had the separation using a really nice stem to turn Gilmore's hips, and if Wilson just threw the ball on time and more accurately, it would have been a catch. The other throw that was a miss was a slant fade double move on the left side of the field. Wilson put too much air on this one. Now, unlike the previous play, however, I don't think Metcalf had Gilmore beat on this one. The one thing I will say is that if Wilson threw a better ball, it at least could have given him a chance. Regardless, it's definitely a miss, and it's pretty good coverage by Gilmore. Outside of those five targets that we just talked about, I went through all of Metcalf's routes and specifically looked at the ones that Gilmore lined up against him. What was interesting as I looked through my notes was that Gilmore actually had Metcalf covered pretty well throughout this game. Outside of those four targets that I think Metcalf clearly won, I think Gilmore got the better on him on those other snaps. Now, obviously Metcalf won when it counted, but there's definitely a reason why Metcalf wasn't targeted outside of those passes. I didn't really see any other opportunities where I thought Metcalf should have gotten the ball. From Gilmore's perspective, he did a great job of mirroring his receivers and by using excellent footwork and patience in order to anticipate his routes. Even against routes that were specifically designed to attack his coverage, like a deep curl or a dig route against him lining up as a deep third cornerback, Gilmore was ready for those plays. These routes are really hard to cover, and Gilmore did a really good job. The way I see it is that this game came down to a few plays where Metcalf simply won. This game featured two excellent players at their respective positions, and honestly, it was a lot closer outside of those snaps than I think people realize. If we reran this game 100 times in the same exact situation, and if we used the same exact conditions, I wouldn't be surprised if the results were reversed. That's how good both these players are. When you have so much talent as these players do, and you hone your technique like they have, it gives them each opportunities to make plays. Looking specifically at Metcalf, I really like that he's becoming more than just a freak athlete in this offense. It's clear that he's been working on his route running all summer. His stems and how he pairs them with his hands to fight off press coverage is simply awesome to see. This game is the perfect illustration of that. He's already developing into the star receiver that we all knew he had the potential becoming. Well, that's all I have for you in this one. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'll have a new video out for you weekly, and as we keep going through the rest of the season, I guarantee you that we'll have more star matchups to break down just like this one. Until next time, follow me on Twitter for my latest updates at Samuel R. Gold.